Hey, I hope you're doing well and that you're healthy. I'm happy that 2020 is over, as many of you probably are as well. 2021 is going to be the year to start something new. Hit that big reset button and go for it. But how do you start something new? How do you turn that idea of yours from something that's just in your head into a tangible product that you can sell? Today, I'm gonna guide you through the steps to get there. So sit back, relax, and let's go. Now, before I talk about turning your idea into a product, which is all about execution, let's first explore how you can create an environment for yourself that's optimized for getting new ideas. Coming up with ideas is a creative process. According to Graham Wallace in his book, The Art of Thought from 1926, there are four phases in the creative process, preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification. In the preparation phase, it's all about discovering and listening. You reflect on your past experience and any creative work you made earlier to prepare yourself to use your creativity in a new way. Perhaps you want to think of a creative new way to deal with forms and form validation in the React web application. The first step is to look around, see how existing form libraries work and how you solved it in your earlier projects. The second phase, incubation, mostly happens subconsciously. This is when you take a step back from your creative process and do something else while you let the ideas simmer in the back of your mind. Many ideas come up unexpectedly while you're taking a walk outside or you're taking a shower. It's important that you allow for this idea simmering time. I take a walk outside every day to gather my thoughts and clear my mind. It often results in new insights and helps me focus more when I'm working on my business. It's like cooking. Part of cooking is just work like cutting vegetables, mixing spices, cleaning up and so on. Another part is waiting until things are cooked. If you don't give your food the time to be cooked, then the meal that you're preparing isn't going to taste good. The third phase is illumination. This is the time when the pieces of your idea are starting to come together. The project clicks. Perhaps you realize that you can use React hooks and the material UI library to create forms really easily. This is a good phase to keep working on your idea and try out different variations. The final phase is verification. Check whether your idea is any good. You may encounter technical problems that make you realize your idea of using hooks for forms isn't gonna work. Or if you're a writer, you may look at the page you just banged out of your keyboard and decide to throw it away and go in an entirely different direction. What we can learn from this is that getting new ideas follows a standard process for everybody. And you can spark your creativity by making it easy for yourself to go through these phases. So take some time to think about your earlier work, about what's happening in the world around you, and take a walk outside. And before you know it, new ideas will start rolling in. But how do you find out if an idea is worth pursuing? Lots of articles have been written about this. First and foremost, you have to do your market research. What other similar products are out there? What's going to be the key advantage that your product is going to offer? Post a survey in the domain you're targeting to find out more about your potential customers. What kind of product are you building? Kevin Fong, a venture capitalist in the Bay Area, divides products into three categories, candy, vitamin, and painkillers. Many entertainment products think Games or amusement parks are candy. They're nice and enjoyable, but you can live without them. A vitamin product makes things better, but it's not really essential. Perhaps you created a slightly better project management tool or a new email client that does some things better than the existing solutions. People might say, hey, that's a cool idea, or I might use that, and then nothing happens. If the product is a painkiller though, the situation is different. Such a product makes things better by taking away a pain. Nowadays, a smartphone is a painkiller. Everybody needs a phone or it will be very hard to function in our global society. With the pandemic, video conferencing tools have become a painkiller too, whereas before they arguably were more of a vitamin. Another way to look at your product is how does it change the status quo? With candy and vitamin products, your main fight is going to be with the status quo. You need to convince people to start using your product. If your product is candy or vitamin, this is not an easy task. If your product is a painkiller, on the other hand, the status quo is pain. 
so it should be pretty easy to convince people to start using your product. To be clear, I'm not saying that all new products should be painkillers. In 2020, the game industry market was over $100 billion. This is proof enough that you can be successful with candy. But I want you to think about where you stand. What kind of entrepreneur do you want to be? Why are you doing this? Ultimately, your stance and the goal that you set for yourself are going to determine whether an idea is worth pursuing for you. I'll give you an example. A couple of years ago, I was quite interested in cryptocurrencies. So I started building a trading bot for Bitcoin and Ethereum. I spent a lot of time on it. I read papers about Brownian motion, market making strategies and so on. In the end, I was able to build something that made a little bit of money. Not much, but enough to potentially continue the work. Then I thought to myself, why am I doing this? I like the mathematical puzzle aspect of it, but I realized I'm not a trader. I won't be happy running a company with the sole focus of making money by outsmarting other people. I like to work on products that help people and solve problems for them. That's why I started Quarterfall, which is my way of trying to improve education. It's why I started this YouTube channel, to help people like you get started in the software business. So, is your idea worth pursuing? In the end, only you can decide. Once you've decided that the idea is worth pursuing, you need to determine if it's feasible to pursue it. Perhaps the idea you have is simply not feasible, technically speaking. Suppose you want to create an app that allows you to do 12K video editing on your phone. Then you have a problem, because current phones simply don't have the required power. Now pause this video and let me know in the comments below, what was your craziest idea for a product? And did it work out? Next, it's possible that even though your idea might be good, you're not the right person to do it. For example, my bathroom towel hanger sucks. It has this really bad design where it fixes itself to the wall using a single screw and it comes loose all the time. I think creating a better towel hanger might be a good idea. I would buy it and you can surely run a business producing bathroom accessories. But I'm not the right person to do it since I don't have the design skills or the knowledge of handling the logistics of creating such a product and making sure it appears in bathroom shops. It's possible to learn those things and learning new things can be a great motivation to start a business. But regardless of the kind of business you start, even if it's in your domain of expertise, you're going to be out of your comfort zone and you're going to learn many things in any case. So I suggest you start with an idea that matches with your expertise at least partially. That also makes it easier to determine whether the idea is feasible, since it's already an area you know something about. Another thing you need to figure out is if you can build up a business around your idea. How are you going to generate income? You'll normally be creating a product for a particular niche. Can you find out how large that niche is? If you target a large niche, it's going to be harder to create a painkiller product. So you probably spend a lot of effort on marketing. If your niche is small, creating a painkiller product is easier because you can solve problems particular to that niche that nobody has solved. But a small niche also means less potential customers and you may not be able to pay your business costs from the revenue you generate. Create an Excel sheet to find out if the business is gonna work. Put in a column for every month and write down your costs and the income you expect. This should give you an overview of how your business costs and income are going to evolve. Make sure that you have a few global parameters in there, such as the number of new customers per month, unit price of your software, average salary costs, and so on. You can then change these numbers to find out how they play out in your financial model. All right, so you determine that your idea is worth pursuing and it's feasible. What's next? You need to execute. But before we get into that, give this video a like. It helps tremendously to support this channel. The most important thing to realize when you start implementing your business idea is that you will be wrong a lot. Perhaps there's a technical issue you didn't consider. Perhaps you misread the needs of the niche you're targeting. Perhaps you overlooked a competitor. 
that already does what you do and much better. There are lots of things you can be wrong about and I can assure you, you won't get everything right from the start. So the next step is to make sure that you fix everything you're wrong about before it starts to become too costly. The way to do that is by using prototypes and getting early feedback from your customers. What are the main selling points of your product? Create simple prototypes to show these off. You can use PowerPoint to design a few simple images or screenshots of what the product will look like and what it will do. There are also lots of prototyping tools for phone apps if that's the device you're targeting. Show these prototypes to potential customers and ask them what they think. Also ask what feature is the most important to them. You can even tell them you can't develop everything at once, so they should indicate what feature they'd like to have first. Let your customers define the priorities for you. Next to prototyping, strip your idea down to the bare minimum of what you think is needed. Often, this is less than you think. Don't be afraid to do things manually in the beginning. Try to remove everything that costs you a lot of development time. You want to do the minimum work needed to get a first version out. Almost no one is going to use your first version, but it's going to provide you with a starting point. And then you learn and improve from there. In the Lean Startup book, this is referred to as the MVP, the Minimum Viable Product. There's a link to that book in the description below. But creating the MVP is not the only thing you should do. You can get customers already before having a product. Send out a survey through social media to learn from your potential customers and ask them to sign up for your newsletter. Put out a video describing what your product is going to do and allow people to enroll in a waiting list. Next to giving you a head start reaching customers, these things also kick off your learning process. Is this product something that people want? Does my message arrive? You definitely want to know these things before you spend a lot of money on developing a complete product. The goal is to quickly get to a situation where you've launched something and then you iterate. Make changes, see what happens, learn, rinse and repeat. The nice thing about an iterative approach is that it forces you to don't try to do too many things at the same time. Focus on improving one thing at a time, do it well and then move on. And remember, this is not just about creating the right software product. It's about evaluating your business model as a whole. The product is only part of that story. So you want to have a rudimentary version of your complete business model out there. From the marketing channels you use, to the sales strategy, the pricing, and obviously the actual product. This is also why I advise that you're very careful with initially releasing a free version of your product. You need to test your business model as a whole. A crucial part of your business is that you generate revenue. If you release a free product, you don't test that crucial part of your business and it may get you in trouble in the future. Believe me, it happened to me. The only reason a free product makes sense is if that's actually part of your business model. For example, your revenue will come from ads or the goal of the free product is to be limited and serve as a stepping stone to a paid subscription. Or perhaps your product is free, but it requires a piece of hardware that you do need to pay for. The product then becomes the hook for people to buy the hardware. So in summary, first find out if your idea is worth pursuing, both from a market and from a personal perspective. Then determine if the idea is feasible. Is it technically possible? Are you the right person to do it? And can you create a viable business around the idea? Finally, you need to execute. Create prototypes and learn. Determine what the minimum thing is that you can launch, the MVP. Build it and go into an iterative learning mode as soon as you can. Test the various aspects of your business model and improve one thing at a time. Personally, I've become completely addicted to this process. Many people are afraid to do this because you need to step out of your comfort zone and be willing to think differently than most people. And then there's always the risk of failure. But you know what? If your goal is to put yourself into a situation where you continuously learn like crazy, then yes, failure will happen. It's part of the process, so embrace it. It's never personal, unless you make it so. There are still so many problems in the world to solve. If you choose to go down this path and you're resilient, you don't give up, then someday you're going to be a pioneer. I hope you enjoyed this. 
If so, give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel if you want to watch more of my content. There's a new video every week. Thanks for watching, take care and see you soon.